Father God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, it is again and another time that we drop our head in the locks of our shoulders. We come say thank you for your grace and your mercy. You've been good to us, Master, and brought us from a mighty long way. And we come again saying thank you, realizing, my Master, that one of these old days we got to leave here. We come praying that you will save our soul. Fill us with thine precious Holy Ghost. Cast our sins in this sea of forgiveness, never to return unto us again. My Master, we pray that when this life journey is over with, that you will give us a home somewhere that not dying here. Pray that you will let us be able to go home and live with thee forever and ever more to come. These blessings that we come praying. We come asking in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Just for a little while, we want to look at, at Jonah. This done worried me a little bit today. And Jonah, the second chapter, the first through the third verse, and the tenth verse, then you will find these verses. Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly and said, I cried by reason of mine affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. And out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou hearest my voice, for thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the floods compassed me about, and all, all the billows and thy waves passed me over. And that tenth verse says, and the Lord spake unto the fish, and it vomited up Jonah upon the dry land. Only you for thought. The Lord lifted me up. The Lord lifted me up. Now, Jonah was a servant of the Lord. And the Lord had came to him in a dream and had told Jonah to go down to Nineveh and cry unto that wicked city. Tell them, I have seen I have seen everything that they do. And I want them to repent and come hollering our ears, our ears. I can't hold out no longer. I want them to come back unto me for the thing that they are doing. They are evil. They are wicked. And I done got fed up with it. But when Jonah heard what the Lord had told of him to do. Jonah got up and he went the other way. Instead of going to God's word, he went from the word of the Lord. And as Jonah had went on to Tasha, he paid his fare onto the shipmaster. He got on board the ship and he was headed down to Tasha. And when he went on board the ship, the Bible says that he went down in the size of the ship, got down in the bottom of the ship, and he laid his head up on a bag, and it said that he fell fast asleep. And when the captain had got everybody on board the ship, then they began to set sail. And when they got out in the midst of the wars, the Bible said that the wind began to pick up, sky got dark, 
it began to rain, thunder, and lightning, and the ship was being tossed to and fro like it was about to be broken. And the shipmaster told everybody to start calling on their God and tell him about the situation that they was in. And as everybody was praying, one come running to the shipmaster and told him that there was one underneath the ship and he wasn't praying, but he was fast asleep. And the shipmaster went down and found Jonah asleep and woke him up. And he asked him, Oh, sleeper, what is thy name? What is your occupation? Where is you from? What is your country? And Jonah began to talk to the shipmaster. And to tell him that he was running from the law. And the Bible said that Jonah told the shipmaster, after they had cast lots, he told the shipmaster, if you pick me up and cast me overboard, then everything will be all right. And they began to cast lots. And the lot still fell on John. And after a while, by and by, the Bible said that they did pick John up and cast him overboard. And the Bible said that the Lord had a big fish waiting on John to swallow him up, go down to the bottom of the sea. And there the fish stayed there for not one day, not two days, but three days. And all the while, Jonah was in the belly of the fish, and the fish was sitting on the bottom of the sea. Now Jonah needed lifting up. The fish needed lifting up. But Jonah's trouble didn't start right there. Jonah needed lifting up when he ran away from the word of God. Jonah needed lifting up then. Then he went down and got on board the ship and fell asleep. He needed lifting up again. Every now and then in this world, we need a lift in life. People will knock you down. They will take their fist and they get mad enough and they can swing hard enough and they will knock you down. And then that's not the only way that they can knock you down. They'll take their tongue and put on you and say some mean, nasty, and low down thing that they know ain't true. And they will knock you down. They'll knock you down spiritually. In this life, we get down more than one way. Sometimes our help get down, and we need the law to pick us up. Sometimes we get down financially, we need help getting up. Emotionally, we'll get where we need help to get up. Spiritually, we need help getting up from time to time. There are different ways that we need a lift in this world. I began to look at that word lift. It says to pick, the lift is to pick up someone or something or to lift up the name of Jesus. I stopped by to tell you, Jonah was in a mess. I'm crying out to let you know this evening. The way that things are going in the world. The way that peoples are killing one another. The way that COVID-19 is killing us. We need a lift. And as we come on down in this lesson today, 
I want to show you that even Jesus needed a lift. I'm going to get to that after a while. But we find that when Jonah was on the bottom of the sea, we find that he remembered his mind, went back, and he began to call on the name of the Lord. Jonah didn't see no help coming in. He didn't see no help going out. But he remembered that his father had all power in his hand. And he was able to do all things but fail. He remembered that the Lord was on the highest mountain top. He remembered that the Lord was in the lowest valley. And he knew no matter how deep the sea was, that the Lord was still in the midst of the sea. I stop by to let you know that the Lord, he is everywhere. We can't outrun him no matter how far we run. No matter how long we run, we're not able to outrun the Lord. For he sees everything we do. He knows everything that we're thinking about. Before we owe my mouth to say what we going to say. He already knows everything. The Bible said that Jonah remembered to pray. He remembered to call on the name of the Lord. Even though that he was in the midst of the sea. And even though he was missed in the midst of the whale's belly, found that he was shield on the bottom of the sea. Day after day done gone by. But he remembered to call on the name of the law. He told the law in that third verse, For thou hast cast me into the deep away from thy sight, in the midst of the sea and the flood. I heard Jonah even cry that the billows and the way were wrapped about my head. I'm trying to leave you here, but every now and then we get down like Jonah did. Sometimes we will fall out of the will of God. But that don't mean we got to stay out of the grace of God. All we got to do is pick, get up, clean up ourselves and begin to call on the name of the Lord and begin to talk to him and he will hear our cry. I got to go on and finish this. Because this took me a long time today. It took me back to when... Jesus had come on the scene. He had been here for 33 and a half years, down through 43 generations. And all of his 10,000 blessings, he had them gave them out that he had in his hand. And his time was fastly approaching that he had to leave this world. Tell me. The Bible said they had them caught him up and they had them found him and he was praying and they had began to march him from hall to hall. They had them smoked him with the palm of the hand. They had them talked about him. They had them call him even a bells of blood. They had them took his crown off and put him on a old raggedy crown. Then pushed it down to the blood come streaming down. Took off his royal robe, put him on a raggedy robe, and they began to beat him. They whipped him to the blood, had his clothes clinging to his back, and then they put him on, put him. Uh, 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 they put him on uh, a cross 
up on his shoulder. And they told him, Mars, man, Mars, tell me the Bible said somewhere by halfway up, God got the hill. Human nature gave the way. He dropped down on his knee. They told another man to pick up his cross and carry it on up. God got the hill. And when he was almost there, I heard somebody on the side. They was crying. But I heard Jesus say, Weep not for me, but for the fallen generation that's coming on behind me. After a while, by and by, and he made it on up the hill. They took his cross, laid it down, laid him on the cross. They nailed his hand and they riveted his feet. They hung him up in between the heaven and the earth. But I heard before he got hung up, I heard him cry, If I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. My brothers and sisters, when the world knock you down, all you got to do is go to praising the Lord, telling him thank you for his grace and his mercy. After a while, by and by, I heard the Bible say he dropped his head and the locks off his shoulder. He died till the S-U-N refused to shine because the S-O-N was hanging on the cross. After a while, they took him down, put him in a bar of tomb. He stayed right there for not one day, not two days, but three days. And on the third day morning, tell me his father up in heaven, raised him up, and he stood on resurrection ground, and he shouted, I got all power in my hand. Every now and then, when folk go to talking about you, all you got to do is steal away, put your hand in the master's hand. He will. He'll make everything all right. All you got to do is tell him about your trouble. He hears us in the midst of our call. I stop by to let you know when folk go to talking about you, they'll talk you down, but they won't pick you up. I heard one say, only time you're looking down on your brother is when you ought to be picking him up. Every now and then, we get lost in this world. But the God I serve, he's able to lift you up, to bear your burden, and to tell you to run on, and he will make everything all right.